right, I'm going to give my, myself permission to not always have to have all of the, like, production quality uh, up at the higher notch. Oh, oh, I just stepped in dog poop. We're off to a great start. <laughs> Take two. I'm gonna step a little bit more carefully. I mean, it's impossible to see in the leaves. You know how? It's not even fair. Um, all right, so I just wanna give myself a license to not need all the production quality to be super high notch in this thing. I mean, I do video work and such uh, for a living, more kind of like animation. The sales implementation's already showing a strong response from these initial offerings, and I'm sure that will be reflected in some strong returns after we maximize everything along the pipeline. But regardless, it's like every once in a while, I think it's just be a lot easier to hold the phone versus setting up the equipment. So this is this is a hold the phone hold the phone episode. But anyways, this is Fozzie. Fozzie is a 1986 Toyota Sunraider. Uh, that we acquired earlier this year. Uh, my brother and I flew all the way out to Colorado uh, to look at it and then ultimately decided to purchase it and then drove it back. So uh, that came with its own level of adventure. And then right now, all I'm coming out here to do is to figure out what kind of battery is actually in this thing. When it's sunny and this thing is in full sun, it actually will uh, power all the 12 volt components, no problem. Even there's a 200 watt converter, so I can actually watch TV in there. But the moment the sun is gone, the battery doesn't hold a charge. And I believe the battery is a lead acid. And I, I gotta tell you, I find myself immediately intimidated by the uh, wattage and voltage and uh, uh, all the things, but slowly but surely I'm learning um, and the goal ultimately is to have this thing ready to go where me and my wife can work comfortably on our computers and not be worried about cloudy day or sunny day based on the power that's in that's that's stored inside right which i think means lithium ion batteries but i've also learned that i'd hope that like oh i can just swap out the lead acid battery with the lithium ion battery and then yay more power but nope because the infrastructure off of the lead acid battery probably isn't up to snuff hey this is this is a long-winded thing which if there's anything viewers love today it's lack of brevity. Whole point, whole reason I'm out here, whole reason I have my phone out is I'm about to dig underneath the bench in this thing and just see exactly what kind of battery I have. Because you can't tell from the hatch. So we're gonna have to go in from in. <laughs> One hand, it's gonna be tough. All right, so there it is. That's probably not great. Right, this thing was sitting for a long time. Mm, this is a nice, this is nice. Yep. Hold on, it's the wrong way. I'm holding a thing awkwardly. So, this is the kind of battery it is. Uh, lead acid. Okay, my God, this thing is heavy. All right, gotta put it back. Okay, so from a vanity standpoint, I don't know <laughs> how well this is going. But okay, I've confirmed what I suspected, which it is in fact a lead acid battery. And frankly, the hope is, given the size of this and how much space is being used up, you could maybe get away with two lithium ion batteries going long ways, which I think weighs less, but see, I don't know what I don't know here, uh, which is probably something you'll hear me say pretty often. Okay, so near as I can figure it, this is it. But ooh-wee, that's a little bit more than I would want to spend on a temporary battery. Okay, I want to take a moment to feel okay about uh, my strength level. <laughs> that thing is 150 pounds. Okay, so just for the sake of comparison, so these always seem to be the like, the gold standard, but I've seen more and more people say it's way too expensive given uh, what other similar items cost but just for point of reference this is 31 pounds so two of these is seriously nearly half the weight of that one big one so gosh i think it might be time to make the jump just doesn't make sense to spend 
$300 on a new lead acid only to know that that's not going to be the long-term solution. Hmm. This is Lily, the dog uh, probably responsible for the poop shoe. All right, so the question of the day is, what kind of battery is it? Found it out, it's a lead acid. Hey, how much would it be to just kind of replace it temporarily, knowing full well I'm gonna update all the electrical? Uh, too expensive to just buy that and then know it's only gonna be temporary. So, what's well, the follow-up question? Uh, it's always a slippery slope. The follow-up question is, can you hot swap a lithium ion battery with the lead acid battery that's in there? No, you cannot. Okay, so what I'm trying to figure out is like, hey, what could I do to basically start leaning towards lithium? What are the core components I would need to plug in so this thing will use lithium without ruining anything, but without doing all of it now, because doing all of it now uh, gets expensive fast. So I'm gonna do a little exploring. Right now, those uh, solar panels are soaking in, charging the battery as expected. Um, when we drive it, the alternator charges the battery as expected. And when we're hooked up to shore power, uh, it charges the battery as expected. So everything's doing its job, it's just the battery is like, thanks, I'm dead. The fundamentals are functioning as they're supposed to, but I don't think the fundamentals can support the higher wattage that runs out of lithium. So I'm gonna try and see what I see, not knowing what I don't know. So the RV itself has two 110 volt plugs, which work only when it's plugged into shore power. So the 12 volt system runs all the basics, right? So all the lights are uh, 12 volt. Um, uh, there's a couple, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what the heck they're called, cigarette lighter uh, inputs. You can tell I'm old because I call them cigarette lighter inputs. Um, and yeah, so, and then also uh, this that we installed uh, runs off of 12 volt. So uh, everything good. And I'm telling you, the system runs fine while there's actually sun in the sky. Uh, it'll run after there's not sun in the sky, but not for long on account of the dead. Ultimately, the goal would be the lithium is in place, I would love to also be able to use the standard plugs uh, running a couple laptop computers. Um, and frankly, eventually, we live in Atlanta, Georgia, so um, some sort of air conditioner uh, solution needs to be figured out. Another slippery slope. Uh, what's the right way to hack in a mini split system in this thing? Because those things are super energy efficient and they cool and they heat. Um, so anyways, yeah, it, 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 there's a lot to figure out. So this is the main uh, electric panel breaker box uh, and it's clearly vintage. Um, and this is for AC, which means probably yeah, see, learning in real time here. Um, AC panel makes me think it doesn't have anything to do with DC, but then right here below, it's talking about the DC distribution panel, uh, and then has <laughs> a chart. Uh, see, that immediately intimidates me. And now we can open up the closet, and with the floor out, you can see kind of what's happening behind the scenes, which is just, just beautiful, really. Just, uh, just a marvel of sophistication and organization. Okay, so looking at it from the top, this thing right here, power converter with battery charger, right? Okay, so date code, 945. What kind of date code is 945? So, and then from here, you can see that's probably all the 12 volt magic being distributed outward. And there's also the vehicle's independent system, which is running the brake lights and the blinkers and such. That's running through here too. Now, it should be mostly easily identifiable to make the distinctions between the two, but there's also an aftermarket stereo that was put in because somebody really needed a woofer in this thing, which, uh, hey, to be fair, the, the low end sounds pretty good, but a little, little over the top. I just think the thing that I need to know is that power converter is the hub that needs to be replaced that I don't think can handle the higher power from lithium. That's the thing I think, I think I know. I think I think I know. Do I think, I don't know if I know what I think. Um, 
but yeah. <sighs> so here is a battery box from outside. You can see here next to it is access to the back of the old fridge, which works when it's on shore power. Uh, I haven't gotten the weeds of the propane system and stuff in this yet, but hey, I'm sure, like I said, it'll be a slippery slope. But yeah, you, you can kind of see where the wires are going, kind of. See, the problem is there's like mystery connected to nothing wires that, you know, are still ran somewhere. Um, up and over. That's, we're looking up at the fridge now with uh, the cinematography of an angel. There's this wire that is connected to nothing, but is also connected to nothing on the other side in what is currently the battery area. So that did something, but no longer does anything. It's there as a prop. Um, yes, yeah, this, I don't know. Here's, here's this that was screwed to something. We've got, yeah. This is clearly the heavier gauge stuff. Obviously has something to do with the 110, but those I believe are connected to the battery. Let's see. Yeah, yep, those big old wires. Here's one, and here's the other connected to the battery. Um, yeesh. See, this is where I'm a moron. I think the secondary red lines are for the 12 volt. So where are those two big old wires going in here? I don't see them in here. Here's one. Okay, yeesh. This looks to be a pretty scary splice. Looks to take one of those big old wires, comes off the battery, and goes in different directions. <laughs> With electrical tape. And one end chopped off all together. All right, well, that's interesting. Okay, here's another big wire I just found. That is part of the two big wires that are ran. Uh, I, why is this? Maybe this is left over from what was formerly the battery bank? But I have no idea where the other end of this goes. Everything's working, so it must not be integral, but... Okay, here it is from the other side. And yeah, this is connected to nothing. That is connected to nothing on that end. So that end, nothing. This end, what? Okay, hold on. Okay, so once, once it goes through this hole, I don't know, there's like no way to tell where it's going because that is, yeah, I don't know. By the way, I don't, don't lean on that. Don't lean on that with your weight. Just learn that. We're learning together. This is a confused face because as near as I can figure it, that wire that's connected to nothing is attached on the other end to the negative side of this battery. Is that just grounding? Why would that big old thick wire be connected to, to noth nothing. Oh, hey. Oh, look at my dog. Look, look what she's up to. This is a, uh, she's, she's getting ready to fool somebody into walking comfortably through leaves. We're gonna get that taken care of. Yes, we are. That's, that's gross. And meanwhile, everything works. Now, there is still the smaller red wire that, that goes all the way through and is obviously connected into things, which might be that mystery clump that's there in the, in the wiring closet. Um, really, again, I, I don't think the system is too um, complicated, but because I don't know what I don't know, eh, that should be my catchphrase, uh, I'm just sitting here wondering how and why that big old wire would be doing absolutely nothing, yet everything still functions. I gotta talk to somebody who knows things, because that to me is just a, a, a head scratcher.